Hello, Hello and welcome. welcome. You are about to enter the Large K Podcast. What's up, everybody? My name is Kazu, and welcome to Large K Podcast. On this show, I interview bands and artists, and we talk about music, favorite shows, and how they got to where they're at. For today's show, I talked with the talented Lisa Snowda. She released her album Clearing earlier this year, a really cool dream pop record that's layered with her mesmerizing voice. I happened to know her drummer, so he helped me get in contact with her. I drove over to West Adams, and did this interview at her place. I brought her some beer that I brewed, so we split one, and she cut up some mangoes. That was really nice. When I was in her room, I noticed that she has her own recording set up with a bunch of instruments, from three different keyboards, a bass, uh, a guitar, and a random kick drum. And from what she tells me, she's constantly recording and mixes and produces everything on her own. That's a commitment, man. She's really into improv and takes every opportunity to record so that it can possibly be a song idea. It's important. Don't take any moment for granted. Plus, you have to keep practicing and recording in order to get better. I just want to give a quick shout out to all the artists and musicians out there who's writing a song or playing guitar right now. Just keep doing it. It's not the end of the world if it sounds like shit. Anyway, the interview went well. We touched up on various topics and it was a lot of fun. All right. Here's my interview with Lisa Sonoda. Enjoy. fun stuff I mean that's what I do is when I'm pretty much alone I just kind of I basically sit down listen to a record as I'm drinking and if you ever watch my Instagram the uh the not the live but the what, what do you call that like when you like click on a profile pic and then like you can see like what the person is doing right now there's like a word for that Facebook live it's not, it's not, oh, it's not, Instagram. yeah, for the Instagram live thing, like, oh. I would sometimes create, like, a freestyle rap that's, like, super short, really? yeah, and then just, like, post it, <laughs> I think, yeah, I think that's I'm totally, that's awesome that you rap, I think I, that's great, I think I, <laughs> I, my favorite is improv and yeah. music, it's my favorite, improv, improv is, like, hella hard, though, just because, like, especially with freestyle, like, as I do it more, like, I'm starting to get, like, better ideas, because there's actually, I've been inspired because there's this guy online named um, Harry Mack. I don't know if you've ever heard of him before, but he'll be out on like Venice Beach, and as people are walking by, he'll just like point to clothes and be like, "Yo, I see the guy with the purple shirt," 
you could go out there and grab that girl and go flirt or like whatever and like he'll just like point out like different clothing and like you know whatever the person's holding and shit like that and like the guy's amazing so I don't know ever since I started watching him I've been inspired <laughs> so I just grab like a free beat from like YouTube and then just start like rapping over it and but it's like but the video length is like so short so it'll be like I'll only have like four bars within that you know so like but it's like all like extremely extremely lame and <laughs> that's awesome though and that you have the guts to post it I mean who cares that's like, great who cares you know it's just like how you like put out music like the first time I recorded like I was so scared to put it up on SoundCloud but like and as you get used to it it's kind of like well this is actually kind of cool you know I mean what well, what was it like the first time you ever posted your cover because that, that's how you started right like I mean when you yeah. started playing music it was like you put up covers on YouTube and stuff like that yeah on SoundCloud uh, yeah I was pretty nervous I'm pretty sure they're all uploaded really late at night uh huh because I'm very much a night person yeah and that's when I would be playing for hours on it mm -hmm. not really during the day yeah, 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 that's that's how that's how it works though. So your brain starts processing maybe like around two o'clock, three in the morning or so. <laughs> like for creative stuff, yeah. yeah. It's totally the same with me. Yeah, uh, I want to go back to um, actually the first thing that we were talking about about just kind of like how you started playing music in general. And so you just uh, as earlier you were saying you got piano lessons. So technically, piano is your first instrument, correct? Right? Yeah, definitely. I was. Ten. Was it ten? No, I was five when I started taking piano lessons. Damn. With my siblings, and we did that every week. And I didn't really like it, but I just kept doing it for ten years until I finally convinced my family to let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that taught me the basic music theory, so that I was able to teach myself guitar. Oh, okay. Ten years, though. That's a commitment, man. It's... I guess so. Yeah. But that, because of that, like, it's pretty much, like, benefiting, like, your skills and on, right? Like, you know. Mm -hmm. And I still like to, I still play piano and keyboard and now sleep a lot. Okay. When did you start playing guitar? I was a sophomore or junior in high school. And I just, I figured out that ultimate guitar exists <laughs> <laughs> so then it just kind of snowballed oh, okay yeah and it's just got it's pretty much gone to that direction and you start yeah improving. i don't yeah i haven't really used that website very much in the last few years but okay yeah ultimate guitar helps man the totally the, the tabs like you got to start on it but you know you already know like all the chords from like the basic theory firsthand so like you know, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure like it was like probably a lot easier for you because I definitely feel that the first time playing piano like you could transition to guitar a lot but like easier like and that's how it was for me so I would play like Legend of Zelda music on piano <laughs> nice. and then like I don't know, start moving on to like an acoustic guitar and stuff but um did your what kind of music did your um family listen to like did they expose you to anything <laughs> my dad listens to well he really likes funk he used to play trumpet oh really in like a top 100 band in the 70s and 80s i think so he really likes earth wind and fire and we used, like we all gone as family to see them oh really wow and burt baccarat <laughs> softer s yeah stuff um so he's the one who always had music. And we also grew up with musicals like Phantom of the Opera. Okay. And so we liked that when I was a little kid. Yeah. Move on. Move on, yeah. <laughs> but I, I haven't really taken a lot of music inspiration from my dad. I just told him recently, I think he paid more attention to melody and energy and bass a lot and different chords and progressions yeah and i focus a lot on the sound and the tone and the effects 
of the different instruments. Okay. The, does that, like, I don't know, based on your focus, like, was there, like, a particular artist, like, that you listened to that helped you focus on that, or? Um, well, big influences for me were Angel Olsen, most of her voice and her heartbreaking lyrics. Mm-hmm. And Beach House and Broadcast. I see that, yeah. Beach House, yeah. And Broadcast. I think Eddie was telling me that you, you guys, did you guys cover a Broadcast song? Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> Which song did you guys cover? I found the F. Oh, okay. Yeah. How did that go? It was cool. It was, it was really satisfying to cover a Broadcast, um, but we practiced it that same day, so it, there were a few mistakes. But it's fine. It yeah. A lot of fun. No, you you did. I think. I, think I love copying Trisha's voice. Oh yeah, no, she's amazing. I love her so much. Yeah, I did. I used to listen to Ha Ha Sound a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. That was a great album. But yeah, because I now I know that um, you have this full band going on. Before, did you mostly like perform solo? Mm-hmm. Like, with effects and stuff, or was it just like you on acoustic guitar? Oh, um. I played solo with all the pedals and loopers for just a few shows mm-hmm. and small things. Yeah. But it was usually just me and Adrian as a duo for a long time. Was it the? Is it that band, Clumsy? Is that what you guys oh, yeah. call yourself? Or like? Yeah. yeah. We haven't released stuff yet, but yeah. <laughs> that's that's us. Yeah, I saw I saw a little footage of it when I saw the uh, the core Asian media uh-huh. interview, you know. And um, I I could actually I could just go ahead and transition to that question. Um, it was really brief, but you talked about how like if anybody's like pursuing art, then it's like a stepping stone towards like perfection or how the person you know wants it to sound like or how they want it to be. Because and I play music too, and it can easily be like discouraging, you know. And yeah. and I was wondering like what. Was there, like, a moment where you realized, like, this is, like, something that you could pursue? Um, I guess just the fact that I had the materials to record myself and to make it happen on my own time, Mm -hmm. then it was something that was more of a, a fun recreational activity. Yeah. And not so much, like, an end goal. Right, yeah, yeah, More of, like, a hobby that you could just kind of, like, keep, like, pursuing yourself into or, like, keep moving forward with. It's yeah. kind of, like, how you looked at it, so, yeah. And I guess posting online, just, that's the end goal of releasing. Right, yeah. And not the, the critique afterwards. It's just mm-hmm. finishing something or enjoying something yeah i think a lot of people ends up with like the end goal as being as like what others kind of other people kind of like think of the project you know and and then like yeah that's actually a good point that you make the end goal should be just like release it it's out there it's done yeah Yeah. screw the haters go on with what you're doing (laughs) i've been listening to like podcasts that ask people about their experience with record labels Oh, really? And it's yeah. crazy that so many labels will tell the band, oh, change this, or this isn't, like, poppy enough or rock yeah. enough. Yeah, No. It's so strange. Oh, no, it is It is strange. Like, um... That we let that happen. No, I mean, it's... When, when people say, like, artists completely lose the control, it's crazy because, um... I think it was, um... I, I, I listened to uh, the, this other podcast, too, and they were talking about how there's an artist, R&B artist, Tanache, and she has, like, a catalog of these songs that, that was going to be on her album. However, like, you know, the label, like, saw one of the songs and thought, oh, wait, this will be better for Rihanna, so we're going to give it to her. You know, it's like, <laughs> stuff like this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and of course, like, when that happens, like, you know, how are you going to feel? It's like, wait, but I wrote that, and you're going to give it to somebody else? Okay, you know? <laughs> At least she gets the writing... Right. It, it, exactly. Yeah, but but you know, but stuff like that could happen. Where 
I haven't heard of that. That's funny. Yeah, so it's kind of like if you imagine you're at a label and then you're like, you know, Lisa, that's a great song, but I think you should give to Kazu. Because <laughs> he could do this better. Because like, it'd be better as uh, <laughs> Singer Sword or Elliot Smith or <laughs> Screamo. I don't know, or Scrambian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Scrambient, man. No. Yeah, dude. Um, but I was also I want to talk about how you're also a, you know, not only a musical person, but you're also a visual person. Because I see that you have like a couple of music videos out, and also the fact that like <laughs> you help shoot videos for like BuzzFeed, right? You know. <laughs> and I was wondering. Just um, once. Oh, just once. Yeah. 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 That was. That, how was that experience? Like, you... It was really cool working with my friend Tiger, who is such an awesome person uh-huh. um it just felt like uh doing a project with a friend no oh, cool <laughs> except in a big room with more access to equipment yeah must be a pretty big production i mean especially like given that it's like a, such a huge name it's under you know it's funny how much it didn't really feel like a huge production because it was just me, him, and one other person. Right. Shooting, so. Yeah, but it still worked out, right? Yeah. yeah. Do you see yourself, like, since you have, like, a background in, like, film and stuff, like, eventually, like, as you release new music, would you like to, like, direct, like, music videos of your own? Yeah. Of course, yeah, totally. Um, Adrian and I are always talking about different music video ideas or projects that we want to do. Mm-hmm. So that's always in the back of my mind. Yeah. That's something that I need to get going on. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just, I don't know, it's so much easier to make music. Mm-hmm. So maybe my calling is to make more music now and focus on video later. Yeah, but, you know, it's something that you could always do, like, at the same time, you know? You never know. Yeah. Your whole music video could be just be, like, a selfie video of you. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sing, just singing along to a song and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, but um, I was I was also thinking about because um, I haven't been to your live show yet, and you know I'm definitely want to like go check it out. You know, one day That'd be cool. seeing seeing it with like Eddie performing on drums and stuff. But why do you put flowers around your keyboard? Oh, I got I think I got them for a video, and it just felt right. Why did I get them? Yeah. I like having um, the flowers. Uh-huh. I guess it's just a, a vibe. Yeah. Um, and I try to remember to bring my selenite lamp. Mm-hmm. And I play my Tibetan bowl at the beginning of each set that I perform. Oh, you ring it like in the beginning? Mm-hmm. It's a B note. Mm-hmm. Really? So we can all just be. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. So, so there, so there's not only like a atmospheric side, but there's also like a kind of a spiritual side to the performance, then, huh? Yeah, if, if people take that from it, yeah. I was wondering um, how, um, for, because for my solo project name, I go, I just go by Kazu, and for yours, like. You know, you don't have like a moniker or anything like that. You just straight up go by like Lisa Sonoda. Oh I was wondering, like, do you have you ever thought about using a different name? And like, why did you want to just go with Lisa? So much so. I always thought I would just go by Sonoda. I don't know why I haven't done that yet. Uh-huh. I really don't know why. Oh, I think it's because I looked it up and there was a band in Japan that had the name. I don't know why just hesitation oh okay but i i wanted to be like Balor or what was it Balor, like v-a-l-o-r oh v-e-l-o-u-r that's pretty cool Balor. but then i think that was taken too but i think lisa sonoda is cool i mean think about it there's all right i mean like andy schaff like you know yeah <laughs> Or to like Angel Olsen, yeah. That's, that's true. Yeah, that's I her. Guess. That's her real name, right? Like Angel Olsen. I think so. Yeah. So people could just go by like their full-on name and and totally be that's cool with it, you know? 
Yeah, I guess part of me is like, well, it's a Japanese name, so in a way you're representing that. Mm-hmm. But I think it does very much give off an image. Well, I think that it gives off an image of just like a girl and an acoustic guitar. Mm-hmm. You never know. I mean, it's not like, um, well, sometimes, like, it's kind of hard to guess because, like, you look at some different band names and if you think of, well, probably, like, the best representation of, like, a name that goes well with the sound would be, like, Slow Dive. I mean, like, you know, it's very, like, <laughs> super true. atmospheric and just, like, <laughs> it feels like you're swimming through the sea of reverb and, you know, it's just... <laughs> so, like, to, to me, that that's, like, a good representation of that, you know. I mean, you, can, you can never guess what the band sounds like at the end of the day. I mean, if you hear Young Lovers, what is that? You know, it's, you probably think it's, like, a French pop music or something, but, you know, they go hard on this really cool post-rock, so... <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I'll probably switch. For the next shows after this month, I'll tell them, just put Sonoda. Um, but I was considering like soda pop or something. Oh, wait, I heard I heard somebody saying soda. I think it was Kyle yeah. that was telling me. Yeah, that. we we say it to each other. He, he, I love it that he calls them the soda boys. It's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> you could do that, Lisa. Lisa and the soda boys. Uh, oh, one time I did a show at UCI. Uh-huh. Uh Lisa Sonoda and the Sleepwalkers. Because I really like Sleepwalk. Oh, okay. The song. So good. Yeah. I I, I kind of like those bands, though, where it's like Kazu and the, I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> something else, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The Kazu and the Sidemen or something like that, I don't know. <laughs> if I can make something. I I wanted to talk a little bit about the the album that you released, Clearing, you know? Yeah. I listened to... Can I see it? I listened to both of them. Oh, yeah, sure. I don't have any. Thanks, dog. Cool stuff. Yeah, actually, yeah, so I listened to both of the album that you released. Oh, so this is with... This is both. Okay, so this is both with 2016 and Clearing. Okay, mm-hmm. so, so I listened to both of them, and, you know, they're... I think they're both really cool projects. I think the difference that I notice is that um, for the 2016, it's very... Um, it's definitely, like, super synth-focused, and, you know, it has that kind of like a beach house, kind of drum beat, like, over type stuff, you know? But then, like, when I listen to Clearing, it's more versatile instrumentally, I feel like, you know? Because there are tracks where it's just guitar and you singing, and... I totally agree. Some, some stuff is, like, kind of, like, hollow, and, you know, but also, like, mm-hmm. not, not too beat-oriented. It's, like, super atmospheric and stuff, too, you know? Like... Like just like the last song on here, I'm clearing my friend. I definitely felt that, but um, but yeah, I I was thinking about the just like how that transition went. Did it kind of go from like when you were recording last year, with you had like a minimum amount of material, and you <laughs> you went with it, and then like and then for like this next one, you were like, all right, no, now I got all this. Like I'm gonna utilize everything as much as I can. Like was it was it kind um... of like that? Yeah, listening back, because I only listen to my songs if I need to help band practice and the parts for my friends to play. Uh huh. But I did realize there's like hardly any guitar in 2016, which is insane. No, that's <laughs> just it's hilarious. Super synthy project. I thought yeah. I um, it's. I guess it's because that specific keyboard was my main fascination at the time. Well, what keyboard is this? Um, oh, is it the Casio? Yeah, it's a Casio. I think it's a synth I was using it with Clumsy. Okay. So, it just uh, was resonating with me the most. Oh, okay. Because all of those songs were just, like, they weren't really meant to be songs. Yeah. Oh, that's tight. Yeah. Um, there are just things that I started doing. Because all my recordings are... I feel like recording right now. 
I like this melody. Is that why, like, some of the titles are, like, March 14th, March 15th, because, like, you thought of it that day, or? Perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> this is the, uh, 70, yeah. 70. Oh. So these are the kind of, like, very vintage-style Casio keyboard, like, you pretty much recorded in around that time, then? Yes. I guess I use this less now, partly because it's not that consistent. Okay. But then also, um, I don't know. But then I also started listening to slightly more post-punk, like okay. Omni and Chris Cohen. Okay. And I got really inspired by dancing uh, call and response. Okay, yeah. I see. So at that moment, you were just... It's a, basically like the shift of influence, I would say, like, would be like the, the big thing. Yeah. yeah, I was super into... I was listening to Beach House all the time during 2016. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely know. very evident, actually. Yeah. Definitely hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Even with the, um... Yeah, even with the drum beat sound too, where it's a do 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 do. I love and then I love the Casio drum beat so much. Yeah, and it's yeah no it's and it's the very the influence is clear, but like you definitely execute it in your own way, you know. Like there's so much layer. Thank you. By layer and layer, and doesn't feel overwhelming. Like it's actually kind of refreshing to be honest with you. you oh, good. Yeah, yeah, so. So it was good, and and also like that's why I kind of transitioned to clearing. I was like, oh, it's it's slightly all right, <laughs> it's slightly different. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and you and you actually released this project like in April this year, right? Like um, that's when I posted it online, but it actually was released on I think it was January. I said April, and then mm, the record label. They released it, like, the end of January, like, 23rd, I think. Oh, okay. And I just didn't post it for a long time, because, I don't know, I just wasn't sure. <laughs> right, yeah, okay, so you're... If I should just let them post it, or also me post it. Okay, yeah, so it's under, you know, Never Anything Records. Yeah. What's your favorite song on Clearing? I, mine is Do You Want to Find Out? Really? Cool. Um, I do like that one a lot. Um, I like that one and the Happenings a lot. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Do these songs just kind of like come to mind suddenly as you jam late at night? Or like is it mostly kind of based on like your experiences in the past and you try to like kind of use that as an outlet? Um... It's all improving at night. Yeah, that's pretty much how I do it too. Yeah, it's create it little by little, and somehow like, cause I, I there are times where I will have a riff for like I don't know, like two years, and then like two years later, I'll finally add lyrics to it. You know, like there will be those moments that's kind of like stuck yeah. in there. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's like I love. <laughs> that and just having something recorded to maybe be inspired by later yeah exactly. that's why i have so many voice memos Ooh. oh my god through your smartphone you have like a ton or something or yeah and yeah and also i record almost every time i improv okay that's actually a really good habit yeah sometimes like bands don't do that where they'll totally forget to record and be like ah oh, shit totally missed that yeah no it's like you remember what you played last time no not at all <laughs> and that, I guess, yeah. yeah that I means because that has happened before you know i wanted to move on to a little bit about your experiences of like because based on the instagram posts that i've seen like through your page you you go to a lot of shows you know and i see that you post band pics and people who you took pictures with and stuff um in your opinion what was one of the most memorable artists you've seen live um this you could include both diy or a venue show if you want to um i was 
so taken aback at Hollywood Forever and Kate LeBon. Kate LeBon. Oh. Um, the opening band, Banana, just blew me away. Banana? Yeah. What are, what are they? <laughs> They're amazing. It's, well, uh, Kate LeBon is an itches artist. I'm Frank. And the war paint drummer. It was just so many, like, repetitive, like, mallet instruments and... Was he playing saxophone? It was very organic. Okay. And it just had such a good pulse. Okay. And everything felt great. Mm. But that show, that show stuck out to you the most, you say? That was amazing. <laughs> they're called Banana? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty sick, Yeah, dude. their vinyl just came out. Cop it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what about some DIY shows that you've seen, like, locally? Um, let's see. Uh, I think one of the first DIY shows I saw Stephen Steinbrink, and he really blew me away, too. His voice was just so pure. And it was so simple with him and guitar, and I listened to his recordings, and it's really different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that really blew me away. Oh! Um, uh, Bog and Hand Habits played at Basic Flowers uh-huh. a few months ago. It sounded so great. Basic Flowers, I've been there, yeah. It was really great. <laughs> That's so cool. But then, I also, I guess I saw Meg play solo a few weeks ago at the region but the first time I saw her at Pam that really really impressed me too wow I think that was the last year yeah so you went to a lot of shows then huh no I forgot to mention Andrew Olsen though oh okay but that's not really dear why but the echo oh it's still still she kills me shows a show you know what I mean What what is it about her show that that really um is is so memorable to you i'll say for angel olsen because she she sounds like a your favorite artist i feel like yeah she's definitely one of my favorites um i guess to me her voice is so mesmerizing and it's hard not to get swept up in the emotion mm-hmm. that she um, summons. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's something. No, and it's so yeah. simple. Yeah, it is really simple. Like I think a lot of people <laughs> get so moved by it, you know, because of that. I feel like. Yeah, I I've covered her a few times, and my friend told me that my other friend cried or something. <laughs> really watching you play? Yeah. Oh, that's that's great. See, like, see you. You're you're doing good in covers. Like you say, you were gonna take take some down or whatever. But like, oh, that's different. I don't record covers anymore. I used to, but I don't anymore. Oh, okay. I never realized that. Maybe maybe it's time to do it again, or I don't know. Something might be inspired, like during late night, and just be like, you know what, you know, I could probably pull this off. But sometimes it's kind of hard to pull off a cover because, um, actually, I think Eddie and I we were discussing this, and he was saying like, I think, I think, I think it's more for like a live show, but like covers should be like unexpected, and like for live shows it should be like recognizable, but like played in like your. Your twist, you know what I mean? Yeah. I always think about that. Yeah. Like, how much do you want to sound exactly like the cover, or take it somewhere else? Yeah. I saw, when I saw Mitski, um, oh. yeah, she she covered Calvin Harris's How Deep Is Your Love. <laughs> My friend and I, we were so blown away, because I was like, is that a Calvin Harris song? <laughs> she, 
and she, she straight up played it you know like she was on bass and like the other chick was on guitar and it was just like a three piece and it sounded great I mean I think she covered One Direction in the our first 100 days compilation I think yeah I think she did that too huh yeah but the best song on that compilation is Brianna Morella's um this there is a war oh my god oh yeah I'll have to check that one out, yeah. I, I think I remember checking out that compilation when I saw Mitski's name on there. Like, but now I want to get into this, like, this is actually a completely new segment I created on this show, and it's called This, This, That, That. And this is where I fire you some quick questions, and you're just going to give me a one-word answer. Okay? Okay. All right. Do I have to do it really fast? No, you don't have to. When I say fire, oh. like, I think it's just, like, my way of saying it. <laughs> okay. Here you go. Here, instead of firing you, I'll throw you some questions. I'll toss you some questions. Okay. And, and <laughs> like a bubble. You'll let it flow. Like, yeah, you'll let it flow, you know? <laughs> you know? Okay. So, yeah. All right. So, first one. Um, cats or dogs? Cats. When you hear a song, what hits you first? Lyrics, melody, or rhythm? Oh, it's hard. I think melody. Melody? Yeah. I'm very melody driven, I think. Yeah, okay. Um, Wes Anderson or Hayao Miyazaki? Uh, uh, that makes me feel really conflicted. I guess um, uh, Wes Anderson. Yeah. 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 Favorite Stanley Kubrick movie? Oh, I should tell you, I'm really indecisive. That's okay. I'm I'm the same way too. Um, that's why I don't have any tattoos. Maybe The Shining because I've seen that more than once. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. This one might be simple. Um, Angel Olsen or Frankie Cosmos? <laughs> um, Angel Olsen. <laughs> but I love. Frankie's new side project, Lexi. I love that album. It's oh, yeah. so great. Yeah. I, um, I don't know if you ever heard of Cara Cara Bonito, but um, she did a cover of one of their songs. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I'll have to check it out. It's, it's, no, it sounds really good. Now, next one. Uh, favorite Beach House album? Devotion. The Ocean? Yeah. Like, within... Yeah, this is, like, outside of the segment but like I was well I mean that's pretty much like all all it is but like um I was I was just kind of wondering like where where do you think Bloom will stand within their discography oh I haven't ranked it like that in my head maybe in the middle in the middle and but I pretty much love all their records oh yeah I mean it's that's why I because I noticed I I wanted to ask that because I noticed like from listening to 2016 I was like okay like you know she likes Beach House (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah yeah Yeah. <laughs> the ocean. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty interesting, though. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Now, um, before I, um, cause like I think I pretty much like asked everything that I wanted to ask, but um, I was wondering, um, since you did release, um, new music recently, but are you currently working on anything new at the moment? Yeah, I'm the kind of person who's always recording or making new things. Um, so I have quite a few, like, half-finished new songs. We've been performing one of the new ones called Karaoke Life. But yeah, one of these days I'll clean them up and just put them together. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, do you, you plus you also produce on your own too, right? Like... Mm-hmm. All right there, sometimes on the bed. That's crazy. You gotta have a really good ear for that and to be able to what? hear everything out and like, you know, it's the way you mix it and stuff like that, you know. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's tough. I'm trying to learn more yeah. all the time. It's a talent, dude. It's really a talent. Now, I, was, I wanted to close this podcast with uh, one of your track, and I was wondering if you wanted to pick one for us. Um. Uh. I would choose either Do You Want to Find Out or Happenings. But I have a new version of Happenings with the drummer. Oh, like you, you actually like have it? Like, can you just email it to me or something? Or yeah. Like, okay. All right, well, we'll play that then. We'll 
first of all, thank you for participating in this. You're like, welcome. you know, and I hope I didn't make you nervous or anything <laughs> like that. No, you're good. Yeah, thanks for cutting the mangoes. It's, it's delicious. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> we have to finish it. Yeah. <laughs> Sonoda. That was it. If you want to hear more of her music, then check out the Bandcamp link in the description box below. She'll be playing more shows soon, so if you want to know more about that, then go check out her Instagram and Facebook. I included her social media links down there as well. More podcast episodes are coming for this hot summer, so don't forget to subscribe and like my channel. My name is Kazu, and I'll see you again on one and only large k podcast peace